Hey Pathfinders, our book has finally arrived. The Pathfinder's Journey is live on Amazon right now and ready for you. If you have already purchased our book and or left us a review, we thank you endlessly. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? The ebook sale of 99 cents won't last long, so head over to Amazon today to get your copy. Be sure to download the free 7-day reading journal to make your journey even more worthwhile. Well, that's all for now. Check out the link in the show notes to get your copy of The Pathfinder's Journey today. Enjoy the show. Being willing to give up and make changes in your life for a better future can impact, obviously, yourself, but it can also impact those around you in ways you don't even know. Welcome to the On Purpose Investor Podcast with your host, Eric and Tiffany Vogel. We spent several hard years building a rental property portfolio so we could have more time with our family and live our ideal life. Finding your path can be difficult, so we're here to help guide you along the way with lessons, tips, and tricks to design and implement your dream life through real estate investing. Now sit back, turn up the volume, and get ready for this episode of the On Purpose Investor. Hey, Pathfinders, and welcome back to the On Purpose Investor podcast. I'm your host, Eric. And Tiffany. We're doing it. It's a thing now. What? You're... It's been like five episodes in a row that I'm a Eric. Yeah. I don't know about it, but you do you, boo. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about sacrifice. The title of today's episode is Change Your Life Through Sacrifice. And when you think sacrifice, you know, obviously, I don't know what the Merriam-Webster definition is, but, you know, it's giving up something for some reason. Yeah. Whether it's giving it up for religious purposes or giving something up to get yourself somewhere else or, you know, just inconveniencing your life or something or someone, well, that's sacrifice. Right. The biggest sacrifice ever made, obviously, Jesus on the cross to die for our sins. It's easy for us to go through life and say, oh, I've sacrificed so much to do things and Today we're going to try and challenge you to see what else can you sacrifice? What can you give up to get to where you want to be? Maybe you don't know where you want to be, so we're going to have to figure that out so that you can figure out how much you need to sacrifice. But hopefully in today's episode you are motivated and geared up and you have some direction on what sacrifice looks like, maybe ideas of things that you can sacrifice that you didn't know of before, just motivated and given the right tools to travel forward on your journey. Right. Yeah, I think as Americans, we are used to a certain level of comfort in things. I mean, if you think about going camping, you and I would go on our camper a lot and we love it, but it is not camping. It is not staying in a tent without a bathroom and roughing it because it's just not the life I want to live. I want a bed. I want my giant pregnancy pillow and I want a bathroom nearby. Well, when I went trout fishing with my brother, that yeah. was camping. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You were uh, digging holes to use the bathroom. That On is, top of a mountain. That is and then, not my life. And then our friends getting chased by bears through yeah. the North Georgia mountains. Yeah. But you were willing to give up that comfort for the mental break and the camaraderie. And you got a lot out of giving oh, up the comforts. And then you came home and appreciated your bed in a shower. Good God, you needed the shower. Yes, I did. I think we get so used to the comforts of life that we're not always aware that we have it pretty easy. Even when things are hard, we still have air conditioning, you know? We still I, have lights. Right. I heard someone comparing looking at the Palace of Versailles, and it's just such a grand and beautiful place. But if you think about it, when they were living there... They didn't have indoor plumbing and they didn't have air conditioning. So even in kind of a bad situation today in America, is still better than living at the Palace of Versailles from a comfortability perspective. What year was that? Like in the 1800s, 1700s? I'm bad with years. I don't know. I think mindset and perspective really can influence how you view things. And I think giving up certain things makes you appreciate them so much more when you have them later. Right. And, you know, in our current news and events today, you know, there's this ongoing conflict of Russia invading Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those people's lives were disrupted in a way that we can hardly fathom. Right. Unless you've seen war and unless you've been deployed or yeah. you've you've served in some capacity in a situation like that. Right. Well, I think also natural disasters kind of give us that jarring a glimpse into it, yeah. but, you know, even in America during natural disasters, 
there are response efforts that usually show up fairly quickly. Right. I know some are probably different than others. You know, hurricanes, probably hard to get to, Mm -hmm. different things like that. But that does give us a small glimpse into what it might be like in Ukraine. Right. But they don't have those rescue efforts and that comfort, those people coming in to save them immediately. Yeah. You know, there are people that have been in subway systems for months now. Right. That's their home, along with thousands of other people seeking shelter, you know, with their families. Right. And these people are having to sacrifice everything just to live. Right. Just to not be under the bear of Russia. Right. Oh, well, it's just a situation where they were content with their lives and Russia wanted to take over and they didn't want that. So they're defending for themselves. Mm-hmm. But I think they're forced into a situation where they have to change their level of comfort. And as you approach what you want in life and your dream life, think about are you willing to give up some level of comfort to have something in the future? That you wouldn't otherwise have. Right. We bring up the Ukraine thing because it's it's a huge level of sacrifice. And the Ukrainians are sacrificing so much just to stay alive. Right. And for their independence. Right. I mean, that's what they're sacrificing for. And what are you willing to sacrifice, you know, to achieve a certain level of... Financial freedom. Of of different freedoms in your life. So we're putting that into a lens of, is it that bad? Right. You know? Right. Is it that bad to discomfort yourself a little bit? Or a lot of bit for some of you. For us, it was a lot of bit at times. Right. What are you willing to do today for your future self? Right. So the way I like to think of it is you're writing a check right now for your life in the future. Mm -hmm. And how much is going to be on that check? How much work are you willing to put in so that you can put a big fat number on that check so your future self can live off of the work that you put in in this decade? So it's a delayed gratification check. Yes. We need the delayed gratification care bear. We do. And we'll we'll start working on that soon. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) So you have this check and and you're writing it to 10-year Tiffany. Yes. And you say, 10-year Tiffany, here's a check for $10 million. But you can't cash it until you're 10. And you can't cash it unless you do all these things in the memo block. Right. And all those things in the memo block have to happen in order for you to cash it. Right. So. Think about who do you want to be a year from now, even, or 10 years, or pick the time horizon that feels most appropriate. But when you want to be that person, there are things that have to happen for you to become that future self. And what are you willing today to do that will get you to that future self? Right. Life's going to be hard, no matter what. Mm -hmm. There are going to be different things that come your way, no matter what. You're going to get up to go to work one day, and you're going to have a flat tire. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's uh, that's inconvenience. That is frustrating. That is hard. Yeah. Or you're going to get a call from your local police department that someone backed into your car. Right. Like we did not too long ago. And my car sat in the shop for two months or something. It felt like an eternity. Right. Life is going to be hard, but your perspective on it makes all the difference. The good thing is, is about, you know, our lives here in America is that we get to choose what gets to be hard for us. Yes. For the most part. You know, we don't have to go do things that we don't have to do if we don't want to. Right. Because we live in, you know, America. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think for me right now, I am 19 weeks pregnant when we're recording this. So muscle aches are are real and joint pain and things like that, especially with carrying our toddler. I'm throwing my back out all the time. And I am choosing to try to be more physically active to combat some of those aches. It's not always fun. I'd rather sit in the chair and not move, but I know inactivity is going to make it even harder. So I'm trying to to do more physical things. And that kind of goes hand in hand with, you know, people being overweight. Right. You know, it's really tough to work out and lose weight and get in shape. But it's also really hard being overweight. Yeah, exactly. You know, your back's going to not feel good. Right. If you're overweight. Yeah. Your joints are going to hurt. Your legs are going to hurt. It's going to be hard either way. Right. You have to make a decision on which hard you want to face. Yeah. Do you want to face the hard part that makes you healthier? Or do you want to face the hard part that is, it's going to happen any, yeah. either way. Right. Your back's going to hurt. And yeah. So you get to choose which journey you want to go down. Right. The hard that makes your life better or the hard that doesn't 
progress your life anywhere. Yeah, so. and I, I don't want to put anyone in a situation where they feel like we're calling you out or anything. Obesity is a struggle, and it's not always just a calories in situation. There's a lot of a lot of things that go with it. Yeah. So a lot of health conditions that right. can cause it. A lot of mental things that yes. can cause it. So no judgment on our part. We're just using no. that as an example, and I think it's hard either way. And right now, being pregnant. I want all the sweets and it's Mm -hmm. hard and I'm not doing great. To be honest, I had a cookie and a cupcake, apple pie, chocolate pie. I think I had something else last night after. Yeah. I don't know. There were a lot of sweets yesterday. It was a rough day, but I got up and went to yoga this morning at six 30. So trying to balance it out. So I'm trying to pick the hard and, and make the sacrifice and I don't always succeed, but it's a battle worth fighting, I guess. Right. And I'm very proud of you. I can't imagine being pregnant, obviously, (laughs) but I can commiserate in some way of seeing you go through it. You are definitely choosing a harder part of going to yoga, of going on walks when I know it's probably easier to sit on the couch. Oh, yeah. But in six weeks when, you know, our little boy has grown even bigger inside your belly, it's going to be even harder. Right. And so it's better for you to train your body to accept these new changes coming because, right. you know, this is baby number two. You know what's coming. Oh, yeah. And you know that if you're inactive, it's going to breed more inactivity. Right, right. And the closer we get, the bigger I get. It, it does get harder. Right. And I think that's kind of the reverse of how the process works towards financial freedom and dream life. It's, it's really hard in the beginning, but you get momentum and things start rolling, and you find your, your groove, and it gets well, It takes that carrot, that little carrot that's hanging in front of you that causes you to run. What was it? A carrot in front of a horse's mouth yeah. to run. The Kentucky Derby just happened, and so they're, well, this is, we're in May right now. Yeah, but you know, I didn't even know it Kentucky, just happened. Yeah, so. so carrot in front of the horse makes yeah. it run faster. Yeah. What's the carrot in front of your mouth? What's making you run a little faster? Right. And ours was our dream life. Yeah, well, I think that's why it's so important to have a clear roadmap for your life and what you want out of life, because that's your carrot. That's mm-hmm. what's going to drive you through the sacrifice and the hard times. Right. You want to be sure to give up things that will help you focus on the things that will get you to your dream life. So don't just sacrifice things for the sake of sacrificing. You want to... Instead of spending time or money on something that's going to give you comfort and relaxation, invest that time and money into things that are going to help you reach your goals in your dream life. Some of the things that you can give up today for your future self and family is spending, for one example. What are you willing to sacrifice that you're spending your money on? I like to say it. Stop spending money on things you don't need. It really bugs me, and I shouldn't have let it bug me because it's other people's lives and I really want to go up to people sometimes and just tap them on the shoulder and say, you don't need that. Every time you see a car with a car I lot will... tag or someone test driving a car, what do you say? Don't do it. Every time. It's hilarious. Well, when we drive by car dealerships, sometimes I roll down the window and say, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe at, at some points in your life, it's okay to, to go to that dealership and buy that new car. One day I'm going to go buy something that's amazing for me but i'll probably buy it used still and i'll probably buy it five years old but i'll still probably do it at a dealership but you're speaking from experience on this you're not oh i was that person that needed future me yelling out the window don't do it because you bought a car that was brand new fun car yeah and then you decided you needed a more responsible vehicle so you traded it in and rolled negative equity into I bought, that new... Yeah, I bought two new cars back to back and ended up losing $20,000 yeah. because of it. Right. I wish future Eric could have yelled out the car driving down Thornton Road in Douglasville, don't do it, you idiot, <laughs> because I didn't need to do it. Right. I didn't need that. And now, you know, 10 years later, I'm looking back and saying... Wow, I love older cars because I love the idea that I'm driving around in something that does the utility that it needs to do. There's no big car payment. I'm not losing equity rolling down the road. I have something that is serving a purpose in my life. I'm not inconveniencing my family or my, my wallet or my family's wallet to do so. For you at this point, it is not worth the financial cost of a vehicle because vehicles are so expensive now. And... They go down in value every year. Not and, all of them. Okay. Not all of them. All right. For the majority of vehicles. Right. 
And then when your wife backs into a brick post and you have to replace the back tail light and then repair some side of the vehicle, it's not as painful as it would be if you had a nice new car because I did that last week. Right. Was I bothered by it? Not at all. I was more annoyed with it. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'll I'll go on Amazon and buy a new tail light and I'll get it put in and Oh, those scuffs, whatever. They they were probably going to get scuffed anyway right. eventually. And it, but it, it is what it is. the perspective of we don't get frustrated, really, by things like that that could derail the entire day because it's just not important. And we focus on the things that are important. And I think that's where sacrifice comes in is you shift from the things that don't provide value for your life. And I think it's hard to sometimes determine what actually gives you joy and value. I know you loved your cars. Yeah, you I did. Had. Yeah, and I, I wish I still had that sports car. Right. I really enjoyed it. Right. But it doesn't serve a utility in my life. Today. At this point. Right. Yeah. And we have been talking a lot over the last probably month or so about what our future life looks like. Mm-hmm. And we're in the season of young kids, so having a sporty car is just, not, it doesn't make sense. Right. But we know when our kids are, you know, 10 to 15... We're going to have a fun sporty car. And they're going to want to go on a ride with mom or dad and the Corvette or the Ferrari or whatever our life takes us to. And they'll want to ride around in it and be cool with mom and dad. Right. You know, for an afternoon. Maybe, you know, it's a trip to Dairy Queen to get a blizzard and that's the fun thing to do that day. Right. I'll enjoy it and Tiffany will enjoy it because we'll get to go hot ride around town. Right. (laughs) We acknowledge that that's not what we get today. That that's not what we need today. It well, doesn't not serve a, us today. It's not a term of sacrifice for us now. It was a term of sacrifice for me probably five years ago. Well, but now it's sacrifice breeds an understanding of necessity. Once you sacrifice something, you realize you didn't need it. And you see that it has opened a door to something you didn't know you could achieve. Right. And so by sacrificing, I don't want to buy this new car because I know that it'll hinder my spending and hinder my budget and hinder my life in some way. And so I'm not going to do it. So you decide to buy a cheaper something. You decide to buy a cheaper car and now you don't have a car payment. And so by not having that car payment, now you're able to invest in something that provides something later on. And now five years from now, you're reaping the rewards of not buying that car. And now you just don't like to buy new cars because you're like, well, I didn't buy that car five years ago, and I was able to build this. Right. So today, I'm still not going to buy that new car because now I want to build something else, or I want to keep building on what I was already building on. Right. Sacrifice breeds an understanding of what you really want. Yeah. That's what I see that. Yeah, definitely. So to, to wrap up the spending thing for me, I will say stop spending money on things that you don't need. To satisfy and, impress. you know, impress the people you don't even like, yeah. you don't even care about. Right. Well, and I think the car is just one example. It's, it could be a house. It could be Target runs. It can apply to anything. Target runs. What's that? Going to Target and spending a couple hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. I do that at Costco. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so not just in what you spend, but also giving up some comfort. Okay. Um, so the next episode, we're going to talk about some, some moments of comfort that we gave up that are, it's comical now. It was not funny at the time, but uh, we right. lived in a 200 square foot camper pretty much immediately after we got married for six months. And that was a, an adventure, but we were willing to inconvenience ourselves to grow our future life. Right. What are you willing to give up? For your current comfort. Could you potentially rent out a room in your house? House hack. You know, live in a duplex and rent out the other side. Rent out your car. There's Turo is a great resource. You can rent out your car. And if you really have the itch to drive a fancy sports car, you can always go rent one for the day on Turo. Or you can turn it into a business for yourself. Yeah. And buy that fancy sports car and you have it and then rent it out on Turo for other people. I mean, that's probably a step way down the line if you're not financially independent already. And I wouldn't take on that risk if I were just getting started in real estate investing or investing in general. But, you know, if you have achieved your financial independence journey and you're living a, a pretty rich lifestyle in terms of, you know, time freedom and financial freedom, go buy that fancy sports car and let other people yeah. drive it for a fee. Yeah, I think also just giving up eating out. A lot of times we would cook meals and meal prep and things like that so that we could save money to 
put it into our business. And it's hard to sacrifice eating out and then eat healthy. Because if you're not eating out and you don't have that convenience of, you know, the food just being ready for you and you're paying for it to be ready for you, then you're having to find time to cook it for yourself or prepare it for yourself. And if you're using all that spare time to build a rich life and build your dream life, it's probably easier to buy you know, microwavable stuff, and it's probably easier to, you know, make PB&Js and make food that is not necessarily that healthy. Right. So you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit more in the time category of preparing for that inconvenience of not eating it. Well, I think you can leverage the time that you are spending cutting vegetables or whatever you're doing to eat healthier. Leverage the time by listening to vodcasts or have a YouTube video on in the background. Or having a conversation about your dream life with your spouse and partner. Yeah. And even if you're only halfway listening to that podcast, you're still digesting things and hearing things and Mm -hmm. and it can help. That's right. So we we talked a little bit about giving up some of your time. You want to use your time in the most advantageous way possible. So giving up TV, listening to the radio, and using that time to educate yourself. I mean, a lot of people say that we all have the same 24 hours in the day, I guess. And a lot of people say they don't have time to do whatever it is that's going to help them reach their goals and their dream life. But if you really look at how you spend your day, how much time do you spend on social media, watching TV, doing things that aren't necessarily productive? Your phone can tell you how much time you're spending on each app. It's disgusting sometimes when I look and see, oh my gosh, I spent, you know, three hours on YouTube, and some of that's me falling asleep watching YouTube, but it's really insightful to see those five-minute Instagram checks add up over the course of the day. Right. It's hard to have that honest conversation with yourself of, is it really something I'm willing to give up? Am I willing to give up 30 minutes you spend on lunch scrolling TikTok and eating your sandwich for something that might inconvenience you. And by saying that, it's saying, you know, instead of scrolling Facebook or TikTok during your 30-minute lunch break while eating your sandwich or or lunch, you could absolutely get a a podcast episode in that time. Read a book. You could probably read a half a chapter of a book or a whole chapter of a book, depending on, you know, how fast you read. But the thing is, is your brain's not going to be resting during that lunch break. You're not going to get the rest in which you are thinking you're getting by scrolling TikTok and, and Facebook. The thing is, Your brain, it might seem like it's getting rest when you're scrolling social media, but it's being constantly used. Right. You're constantly producing, what is it, dopamine? Yeah. So we, no, we're constantly producing cortisol. Cortisol. And you get a dopamine hit from scrolling social media. They designed it that way. Mm -hmm. You get that high. So you get it from social media. You get it from eating fatty foods. You get it from drinking. And that's why at the end of the day, so many of us, myself included, turn to something sweet or something to drink to to Or relax. something to veg out on. Right. And the healthier approach to reducing the cortisol levels is to go for a walk, to meditate, do something that is truly shutting your brain down. Because when you're watching TV or scrolling social media, you're still stimulating your brain. And it gives you that dopamine hit, which lowers the cortisol, but it's artificially doing it. Right. And so if you're not going to rest during your lunch by and truly rest, yeah, and tr- if you're not truly resting by scrolling Facebook or TikTok or Instagram during your lunch, then do something productive with your time. Because unless you're going to sit there and listen to waves crashing or white noise while eating your sandwich and, and literally just chewing and and not thinking about anything, then you should sacrifice that time to go read a book, listen to a podcast, watch a YouTube video. Do something that advances your life towards your dream life, that adds to the educational material that you're trying to envelop your life with. Yeah, Yeah, you want to also use your time off. So not just your lunch breaks, but if you have a long holiday weekend, you want to build your dream life instead of just vegging out and not accomplishing much. I know there's a seminar that is hosted in Atlanta Memorial Day weekend every year and Labor Day weekend out on the West Coast. and It's been tough for us to go because of your military duty, but we try to invest in going to things like that on our time off. And it made it really easy when we were working our jobs because we didn't have to ask for vacation time or something and then pretend like we weren't 
doing this thing on the side that we, you know, were kind of hiding from our employers because we didn't want them to to know everything that was going on. So we tried to invest our time off in, in developing ourselves. I really wish I could have a conversation with every single listener and just ask them, you know, what have you given up this week in order to chase your dream life? Or what do you think you can give up? And how do you think it'll impact your journey? How do you think it will fast forward your way through your roadmap? I really wish I could have that conversation with every single listener out there and say, are you living your dream life? Right. What did you give up? Because there are probably people listening that are like, man, they are, they are hitting home. I did that. I did that. And I'm now cashing that check that I wrote when I was you know, 20 years old and I'm, I'm 50 and I'm living this dream life. Or maybe you're 25 and you wrote a check when you were 18 and you sacrificed seven years. Right. It really doesn't matter on the age on which you write your check that future self you is going to cash. Well, and even if you're 50 or 60 right now, you can write the check that you're going to cash later too. It doesn't matter your age. And if you are older in age and you're listening and you're like, I don't want to write a check that I don't know if I'll cash because you know I don't know how long I have on this earth. Well, the thing is, is we like to talk about with friends of ours that are 60 and 70 years old that are investors. We ask them, you know, how do you stay motivated and encouraged to keep building for your dream life? And they say, well, it's, it's not about me anymore. It's about my children, about my children's children, and showing them what success looks like and what a dream life can look like. And it's about building a legacy for everyone. It's about building this generational wealth of knowledge and sometimes just generational wealth that you hope that transfers down the line. It all started with a sacrifice somewhere. It really doesn't matter about what age you are. The check that is cashed, whether it's you cashing it or your children or your children's children cashing it, let that motivate you to give sacrifice a big hug. Right. Embrace it. You never know who's watching what you're doing. So even if you don't have kids, just making changes in your life can have an impact on people that you don't even realize. Being willing to give up and make changes in your life for a better future can impact obviously yourself, but it can also impact those around you in ways you don't even know. So one of the quotes we like to talk a lot about is Dave Ramsey always says, if you live like no one else, later you can live and give like no one else. And maybe part of that legacy is giving a lot to charity that really resonates with you. You want to build a life and a legacy that aligns with your values and what you want. And there are things that we buy and spend time on and rely on that might give us temporary comfort, but they don't give us that long-term sustained joy. And I think for us personally, we're still figuring out a lot on what we want out of life. Our original roadmap is very different from what we realized we actually wanted, but we're I guess, reapproaching it every week, it seems. But when we first wrote that roadmap, that's what we wanted. Right. And as we went down the road a little bit, we would revisit the roadmap and say, well, you know, we're a year into our three-year roadmap, and I used to want this, but now that I've sacrificed some things and I've lived in, in these different ways, I don't think I want that anymore. And it's okay right. for your three-year vision or roadmap to change. It's okay it for should, it to change. because you will change. Right. And the person you are a year into your roadmap is different from the person who wrote it. My biggest challenge to you is to say, think about who you were three years ago from today. Like right now, listening, wherever you are listening to this, just take a second and think back to who you were three years ago from right now. The May of 2019, or I guess it's June that this June, will come out. June of 2019. Who were you before the pandemic? Who were you before the COVID thing happened and, and all that? Can you look at yourself and say that you are vastly different? I know Tiffany and I can say we are because we were on this journey of financial independence and we were really hustling back then. This was before we had our son and life was vastly different. But not just life was vastly different. We were vastly different people. Whether or not you changed between three years ago from now in three years from today, so into the future, so June of 2025, in June of 2025, I want you to make a challenge to yourself and a promise to yourself and say, you know what, in three years from today, I want to look back and be so incredibly proud of who I've become. I'm so glad I'm not that person anymore because I'm so much better today. 
I'm better today because of all the things I went through. I'm better today because I lived my life intentionally. I created an on-purpose journey that was built by discovering my why. I, I listed out my top 10 with myself or my spouse or my family. You know, I set some really big goals. I had some BHAGs, some big, hairy, audacious goals that I set after. And then I designed this roadmap. I designed my lifestyle. And then, you know, I, I sacrificed and, and I got there. And whether you're on that journey three years from now or you're, you're at your destination, I want you to be able to look back in June of 2025 and you're looking back to today. And I want you to be able to say, I'm not that person anymore, and I'm so glad I'm not. I'm a new person. I'm reborn. I am living this dream life, or I'm on my way to this dream life, and I'm so proud of me. And I'm so proud of the people around me. I want you to be able to do that. And it all starts with a little sacrifice. Be thinking about what you're willing to sacrifice and give up. And we really appreciate you all hanging out with us and listening to us talk about sacrifice and how you can have a better tomorrow with what you can give up today. What lessons can you take from this conversation and apply to your life? Don't let the time you just invested go to waste. You only get one life, so live it purposely. That's all we have for you today. See you next time. Are you ready to discover and build your dream life? Then it's time to become a Pathfinder. Head over to onpurposeinvestor.com and sign up for our newsletter to get tips and tricks to help you find your path and get the latest from our blog. If you haven't already, we'd really appreciate an honest review on your favorite podcast app. If you're enjoying this show, share it with friends, family, and fellow investors. See you next time at the On Purpose Investor Podcast.